Morning guys, it's Tuesday morning. Oh geez, let's see, it is probably the uh, the 3rd of December. And uh, just put new uh, batteries in the Super Duty yesterday. So I decided to leave it outside and not plug it in and see what kind of start I'd have. So we're gonna bring you guys along for that real quick. Thirty-seven degrees it says so let's see wait start lights on fired right up so it's spinning it nice and fast there I do think I have some other uh, things that are creating my long crank situation with this truck uh, usually when it's warm I need to look at the uh, oil lines for the high pressure oil pump that run from the pump to the uh, heads. I watched a video over the weekend that showed uh, if you've got oil in your valley uh, on the top of the motor that it could be those lines leaking a little bit and I noticed I did change an IPR valve on this truck thinking that was the problem and not being able to fully uh, function test it at the time I changed it because it seemed like the right thing to do and uh, there was a bunch of oil in the valley so um, I always get a little bit running out the back of the motor and things like that especially uh, in the summer when it's warmer so those things can look like a uh, bad rear main or something but in actuality it's, a, it's coming off the top of the motor so I may look into that doesn't look like they're too terrible to change the uh, o-rings in them and uh, cheap fix so I'll, uh, I'll bring you back when I get to the shop I'm gonna go put out some uh, snow plowing markers today and uh, mark my parking lots up now that you can see it's sort of rainy and it's warmed up quite a bit the ground uh, with the melted snow and a little bit of rain we got ought to make the ground plenty soft for me to pound those uh, pieces of half inch PVC marker into the ground so I'm gonna go do that and get it out of the way before it snows again uh, so that I'm not flying blind even though the places I have for my snow plowing accounts I've had them for years and years and I I really kind of know where things are but when the snow gets deep it's nice to have them out there so I'm gonna get that done and uh, see what else we can't get into today at the shop so stay tuned all right guys I'm back and uh, I guess we'll do like a little vlog here or something today just to get some video going uh, I got the Duramax out and took it to the car wash and uh, I didn't cover up the windshield and the windows on this and the truck with tarps or anything so it got kind of scuzzy so I'm wiping it down now with you can see it's kind of smeary maybe I don't know if you can see or not uh, I got the wax and grease remover out and it's taking the overspray from that oily residue right off um, windows are kind of smudgy but uh, I'm gonna finish getting this cleaned up here today and uh, probably call it a day got a decent day outside it's almost 50 it's supposed to be it's only supposed to be like 40 today and 50 tomorrow but it's not too bad super duty needs a bath it ain't looking too uh, clean and uh, it's kind of mucky and wet out here and uh, I got this outside water line here that I may have mentioned in a previous video you can see the pipe kind of running down there along the edge of the flower bed in the front I have a spigot around the other side of the building and I just ran this and I always blow it out in the winter well I didn't get it this year and uh, I've had it about 10 years and it finally broke so I'm gonna have to work on that at some point but no big deal it's winter time it needs to be shut off anyway and I already had the water turned off that feeds it it just there was water still laying in it and I hadn't blown it out I got lazy so uh, I got that going on for today we got the batteries in the Super Duty yesterday. There's one of the old ones. Uh, that one's the really crappy one. The other one's better, so I'm going to use it as a backup for my air compressor, uh, tow behind air compressor, or you know whatever I got. So I'm just working on this and trying to get this cleaned up, and then I need to get um, the shop cleaned up too, so that I can start doing some work in here. I am going to spray the bed liner on the front of this header panel and down in there tomorrow I just gotta clean it out and uh, that gray that is on that uh, front of the bed there is rattle can etch primer and uh, 
Believe it or not, there is not a speck of rust on it. I don't know what it looks like underneath that primer, but that was ground to bare metal to feather that bed liner back when I had to do my repair up there and get all the rust out of it. Um, it really uh, is held it off. So I'm gonna take the blow gun and blow all the garbage out of there and uh, make sure it's dry and wipe it down. And then uh, go ahead and mask up the bed so that I can spray that and mask the rest of the truck off of the bag and be done with that. Uh, that's tomorrow's agenda because it's gonna be a little warmer. This is what my floor looks like after I have an oil dry on it and oil drip all over it. So I gotta take some lacquer thinner to the floor and give it a scrub job. I don't have a drain in here and I really don't want this stuff going into the water anyway. So I'm gonna scrub that mess up. Uh, I like to oil spray them outside, but the weather just wasn't cooperating and I didn't wanna wait. Even though we do have a nice day out there, I didn't wanna wait for it. I just, it needed to get done. It needed to get checked off the list so that these trucks can be outside and in the weather, especially the Duramax with all its recent body repairs last winter and uh, never seeing salt last year. So that had to be done. So I got that wrapped up and I'm just gonna get the bed wrapped up and get the plow on it and uh, get the salt spreader on it and off the other truck and get it in here and ready for some uh, body work. So that's about all that's going on today. Uh, I don't know much else. I, mean, I, I did a little uh, video the other day on getting that seized up pin out of this plow pocket over here. But uh, that's about it. So uh, I guess that's my quick little snippet for today. Um, I got a couple other videos to make. So uh, I'm gonna get to making those. So that's my morning rundown. I'm gonna make a video. I had a question on how the salt spreader works. And uh, maybe we'll just tack this on right now. Basically what I have here, this is a Western ProFlow salt spreader, not the ProFlow 2, just the regular ProFlow. Um, and I've got it rigged up so that it goes in through the receiver hitch down there. And I basically just welded a piece of uh, square tube between this rail and the one on the other side to make that. And then I put these braces on it so it doesn't rock. And I've got foam underneath it where it sits on the bumper and some wood to take up some slack too. But um, just wanted to give it something so that it doesn't... I've had it on other trucks with just these on it and it actually rubbed the plastic flat. And that's not what I wanted on my daily driver. So that's, uh, that's how it's mounted. Um, and then the wiring harness runs all the way. You can see it comes out right there. And it runs up along the frame rail all the way up. And uh, I'll, I'm not going to pop the hood, but um, the harness comes up to this battery on the truck. And it's just a positive and negative feed. And then those wires come back inside the truck through a hole under the in the firewall under the dash, and they're run up along my dash down there and come out, and that's the controller. And uh, basically, this is what you got. This is an older style controller. Um, it's got a rheostat type dial on it. It's not backlit, but uh, this thing will throw from like three to thirty feet. Uh, 30 being maximum speed there. I usually run it on three or four for uh, the parking lots I do. Um, it's easier to dribble out a little bit less salt and make a couple extra passes than to wind it way up and uh, waste a lot of material at the price of salt. But uh, basically, there's the on off switch. Let's put the key in the ignition to do this. It's got an ignition hot to it so that you can't run it with it off, the truck not running. But uh, when you first turn it on, red light comes on, and that tells you the spinner's not spinning. And then you push it up to, I think you can see it up at the top there, there's a blast position or start. As soon as I click that, it goes to the green. And I've got it set on number four there, so we'll go outside. And uh, I know that doesn't seem like it's spinning very fast, but that's plenty fast. Usually the salt bounces pretty good across the parking lot, so sometimes I'll run it a little faster, but I almost can't drive fast enough with it to not waste the salt. 
And then it's got these feed gates on the side that you can pull open or closed. That's all the way open. Uh, I made the mistake the first day I used this when I first bought it. I never had one with these adjustable gates, so I figured, well, you need to leave them open. And I filled the hopper in the garage and I headed out to a job that was about 20 minutes away. When I got there, the hopper was empty. It all bounced out. So uh, depending on the size material you're running through it, if you're running salt or an ice melt type material that's not uh, bigger than a number two pencil eraser or not much bigger, uh, you really need to choke these down. Um, I close them all the way and then open them to the very first notch on each side. And that's almost too fast. But uh, if I close one side, what happens is it causes the spinner, the way it drops the material, to only feed off of one side. So if I close that one, it'll only feed on this side, which I know sounds backwards, but that's the way that it works. Um, and then you just turn the switch on and off uh, for every pass and uh, go from there. The one thing that sucks is it blasts out material every time you turn it on, so you get like a huge... Uh, whip out of material every time you turn it on so that's how the salt spreader works um, I'm not going to do a video of it in action. I really don't have a way to do it. I thought about trying to mount the camera Something like this so you could watch it But I really don't have any way to do it and I don't want this camera out in the salt When I'm doing it so, and I really don't have time to be messing around throwing a tripod up and stuff in the parking lot. So I hope that gives you sort of an idea of how that works. And uh, that's about it on the salt spreader. So uh, we'll lump all this stuff together and uh, chooch it up to the YouTubes and uh, give you guys something to watch. So hope everybody's making use of their day and enjoying it. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.